Yeah. So uh, now we shall see the second program. So lab program two. The lab program two is also a flex and a gap. Right? It's a combination of. Uh, it's given that you should implement a YAP program, but it is a combination of flex and YAP. Right? Okay. The Lex uh, program is has something like this. Implement and execute a YAP program using YAP tool to recognize all the strings that ending with B preceded with N number of A's. Okay. N A's. So that is uh, the required thing is uh, A to the power of N B. That's what is the uh, grammar or the that's what is the required pattern. You can have a to the power of n. A to the power of n means n can be 0, 1, 2, 3, any numbers. But it should end with a. We want the we want our syntax analyzer to be built, which can recognize this value. So in the uh, next part, we are just including y dot tab dot h as I have told you. This is for establish the establishing the communication between the lexer and the parser. That's all what we have written in our uh, definition section of the lex program. And uh, the root section of your uh, lex program is have is specifying A. When you see a pattern A, means one A is same, you are returning a token by the name capital A. So what action to be taken for that? That is going to be taken care by your parser or the syntax. And if you see a B, we are returning B. This should be repeatedly done until a new line is formed. When a new line is formed, we are just returning new line as it is. Earlier in the next program, we are just take no action or just return zero, something like that. Is stop the lexical analysis. That's what we used to do. But when we get a new line here, the same is returned to your yeah. So that's all that is in our uh, rule section of our Lex program. Yeah, we shall see the YAP program. The YAP program we have included studio h and lib.h uh, needed for our exit and input functions. And two tokens we have defined just uh, immediately after your definition section. The same we did with the earlier YAP program also, wherein we defined the required tokens and their Residence and associate. Here we are using two tokens, one is A and one is B, that is specified in the YAP. Okay, a rule section is uh, starting here, that is percentage percentage and percentage percentage. Here we are telling the context free grammar yes, followed by new line. And as I told, it is a bottom up parser. All bottom up parsers start from a string and will stop parsing when the start state is gone. That's the reason I told you our program will generate a bottom up parser. Shift reduce parser will be generated when it is a uh, when YAC generates the parser or when YAC generates the syntax analyzer. So when you got this production, input producing yes and New line is an enter. Then you need to print that successful grammar and exit. Right? That's what is the action which we have written in between this opening and closing phrases. But when S produces A, S1, B, or B, means because our uh, grammar or our string need to be accepted is minimum one B. Or it can have any number of A's ending with, for that reason, we have a production A, S1, B. And S1 can produce semicolon. Semicolon here means epsilon. S1 can produce semicolon. That means epsilon or A, S1. It can have one more A and S1, one more A and S1, one more A and S1. But either if you give B, is if you have got a B is a value string. If you got any number of A's and terminated by B is a value string. So that's the reason S1 is producing either an epsilon or either it produces any number of A's 
followed by this one, right? Like that. This is our group selection. Very simple. Two productions. Actually, we are staging it by creating one more production that is input is producing S, which we call it as augmented star state. This augmented star state must be introduced in all the bottom classes. Anyway, I'm going to take up that when, uh, in the next class when we will be doing the uh, shift reduce passing at the bottom of passing and we solve the problem. So, this input produces S is an augmented star state, which is not part of our grammar, but we intentionally is introduced. And this was there, I didn't I forgot to tell the program 1B also. You can see that input producing expression and expression is producing rest of all the things. Right. This is an augmented star state, an additional star state before uh, means which produces the start state. That's what we call it as augmented start state. Right? We shall see that. Okay. And in the main program, what we have is uh, we have uh, we are asking the user to enter a string. We are calling yy parse, which in turn invokes the yy lex for the lexical analyzer. And if the given string is successful, here only we're going to get that the string is successful. If not, we are invoking is we are not invoking the parse yy by parse in turn by itself will going to invoke the error handler which is yy error why we are coding for yy error because what action to be taken in case of error occurrence that should be written we are just we are printing that it is an error and exiting but if you want you can write other code which can take some action so this is the reason why yy error is not pre-coded is left to the programmer to record whatever the error handling you want you can take it so this is what is the uh, program we shall compile it and execute yeah so first as usual we try to file lex lex program uh, 2.l okay oh, sorry. I'm Let's uh, add two dot L. Okay. Uh, yeah. I lab two dot uh, Y. Okay. This thing is GCC. Let's go to Y by dot C. And Y dot app dot C. And link library. Now I got the executable. Let's get it out. Okay, enter a string a a a a a and a b. Fine, a successful grammar. Should run again. It's just a b, a successful grammar. So we run it again and we give uh, a a a error because we mandate we can have any number of a's, zero or more number of a's, but it should end with a b. The last uh, the last string. Is no B which is terminated. Okay, we shall run it again and we have A B B B B B. Yes, of course, errors. We can have maximum of one B which is terminating. Let's check it. Right? This is what is uh, second lab program. Okay, third lab program is a construction of uh, uh, LL of one parser which we ha I have already did and I'll be posting you of that. Lab program number four is uh, again uh, implementing a shift reduce parser, that is bottom of parser, which we which I did explain to you in the previous class. Then again post to the video, don't worry. And lab program number five is conversion of a three address code written in the form of triples to the assembly language code or the uh, machine code. What? Uh, code generate the code generation, which also we discussed yesterday. I'll post you this video also. Right? Uh, next, we have sixth A and B program, uh, probably in the later part of the business. Shall we do it today only? Uh, we shall complete this. Okay? And again, post to one only. Uh, 